What's going on everybody? If you're new to the channel, I want to thank you for tuning in. My name is Jerry Surlea and today we're going to finish up the harness build and tidy everything up. Uh, hopefully hook up the rear tail lights and install a new piece that came in the mail finally. So hopefully on the next video we can actually take it for a ride. Uh, let's get to it. Before we go ahead and get started on this, the new part that came in the mail was the uh, new air filter. Um, this is a piece that Jeff from JTAC Moto uh, recommended to me. It really cleans up and looks really good and it's really not that expensive. Um, so this is the piece that uh, Jeff recommended getting. It's basically like a very simple uh, air filter mesh thing. It's also cleaned up nicely and I'm pretty sure this just sits flush um, on the frame so it's really neat and tidy. Um, it's about $17 US, I think. The company is called Treatland. I'm not going to show you the whole invoice, obviously. Um, but this is basically the part that I had ordered. It's a 44 mil metal screen air filter. Uh, it was $17. Um, the shipping cost more than almost the part itself. <laughs> and it took about two weeks to get here. So I'm gonna hook this up today. Actually, maybe we'll start with that first because it's pretty straightforward and then I'll uh, go ahead and try to affix the, uh, the rear tail lights. My understanding, I just need to obviously take this off. For those of you who are wondering how I even modified the stock filter and air box to work here, um, I'll show you that right now. So this is the stock, this is the stock air box piece. So basically all I did is I took it out of the plastic box and then I basically cut this out of the actual plastic air box. So you can kind of see where my Dremel was and I cut up the edges there. And then that basically bolts to the frame like this. Um, and then the filter goes into it and then you just screw it in together. So that's pretty much all I did for that. I'm pretty sure you could replace this with like a K&N one. I don't know how well it would honestly work, um, but it's basically the new piece I got would mimic a K&N filter, I guess, like one of those round ones. So I think this actually just kind of goes in. So I'm not 100% sure what the hose clamp is for. I'm assuming it's probably for this if I had a different application. Uh, but what Jeff told me, it just kind of goes into the frame um, and it doesn't really attach, it seems pretty snug, so like this actually looks like the correct diameter, but this little lip is just preventing it from going in, so if I bend it and force it in, I think this is all that's required. Ugh. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, I think that's actually just kind of how it goes in. So it just goes flush like that. Um, it's pretty flush to the frame, it's really tight. Like I don't imagine there being any air coming through this. Uh, it still turns like the factory piece. So this piece that used to be in there would turn if I obviously had the bolts in place. But I think that's honestly just how it goes in. Uh, I will confirm with Jeff if that's accurate, but if you look at it from the side now, that looks much cleaner than a giant disgusting filter sitting there. I might paint that black or I might actually leave it. Um, I kind of like the contrast, I guess. It kind of ties in with the engine a little bit there. Uh, there's not too much going on in terms of color. Like I have the rear sets that are uh, just a regular aluminum color. Um, not sure if I'll paint the rod black so you don't see it, or at least this part black. Um, not sure what I'm gonna do yet. Um, so, but yeah, you know, as far as the filter goes, that's basically how it goes on. So I think that's a pretty good alternative to a $60 K&N filter uh, versus a $30 ship to Canada um, mesh filter there. All right, so for the rear tail lights, um, as I said, I have a dedicated tail light and one that's a signal light with a brake light. Um, the tail light also turns on to a brake light, but I found that when you had both of them hooked up, it was very dim, like you didn't really see the brake light go on. So obviously I want this to be safe. Um, so I'm going to hook them up here at the back of the frame here. I have this piece 
of stainless steel that I'm thinking of it welding onto this. It's gonna obviously need a little bit of modification, like I wanna cut these tabs off here. Um, I think this came off of uh, something, I think this came off the exhaust I had on my Honda Grom a while back, um, a custom piece that somebody had sent me. But it actually works out perfectly, so I think what'll happen is these are just held on with some 3M tape. I'm gonna basically tape it on like that. Um, I'm basically just gonna tape them on to this piece here, and then this will be welded to the subframe, and then uh, that'll be essentially it. Like I said, this subframe might be, will be changed at some point anyways, I wanna redo it. Um, I don't like how I can see the tray here a little bit. And I did find this uh, cafe racer type fiberglass seat here, so I kinda wanna build something around this. Um, and then that'll be able to hide the, uh, the battery in there instead of having it under the bike. Um, it needs a little bit of work because it's not quite long enough unless I rebuild the new subframe, like I said, and then I'm going to lose all that, that basically, so I don't have to really modify this. Um, and it'll really give it that cafe look a little bit, so I like, kind of get the idea. So I think that will look a lot better than the seat I have now, which is an integrated type of hump seat, which is cool and it's really easy to put together, but all this space under the hump is kind of wasted space. I can't hide anything under there. And I don't like how the battery is just hanging at the bottom there. Um, like right there, you can see it under the rear set. So I kind of want to clean that up and then hopefully get that on. I think the short back might actually look pretty cool. It'll give it a different look or feel to the bike. So that's gonna be on the on the future build, but first priority is getting this thing done and essentially rideable. So here it is hooked up. Let's turn it on actually. Tail lights at the top. I know that looks really ugly. Uh, you won't see that, it's just tacked on. It doesn't need to be super strong. And then I'll paint it all black anyways. So tail lights at the top, we'll turn on the signal so you can find the idea. Or maybe I'll turn the hazards on. And then the brake lights. Here's the brake light. So, as you can see, it's slightly brighter than the tail light, but not a lot. That's why I wanted this dedicated one, so it's obvious. So. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook up the rectifier to the bottom of the seat pan. I'm just going to drill some holes, also acts as a ground, um, and then it grounds to the body itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I've got everything uh, put into place here. Um, I don't want to permanently attach any of this yet because I still have to take it off and mess with it. Um, but the rectifier is bolted to the bottom of the, the 
seat pan tray and a kind of um, this is the four-way signal switch. I don't want it on the handlebar. I'm not sure if that's legal or not, but I feel like that's probably a good place to put it when it's hidden. Uh, the taillights are wired it very quickly here. So a lot of this will be hidden by the seat, but I mean, it's inevitable I use wires um, unless I drill through the frame, which I will do later to clean this up um, until I know I'm happy with it. I don't want to keep drilling some holes, but for now it's just zip tied onto here and just cleanly put on, or like as clean as possible anyways. Put onto there, I'm gonna go ahead and put the seat on now and take a look at what it looks like. So that's with the seat on. Um, so you can kind of see the rectifier, you can see the you know, like piece that I put on. So once that's painted black, I think it'll blend in. It actually kind of maybe flows with a little bit of the, tail, uh, the tray under there. But the rectifier, you can see it, and Jeff did tell me to mount it under the seat so it can breathe because it'll get hot. Um, so this will work for now. I'm not 100% happy with it. Like I want to use the other uh, like more cafe racer fiberglass seat that I found um, and then build a subframe around that and it'll be able to hide all this crap a lot better. And I can probably even put the brake lights directly onto the seat pantry, but the cafe racer seat. Um, so essentially, this is what it looks like here. So it's looking pretty good. Everything is back together. Um, I think all I need to do now is really just hook up the. I'm just gonna walk around all my bikes here. Um, I just need to create a better bracket because this is not gonna work. That was just a temporary thing I was testing, but I need to figure out how I'm gonna mount this uh, speed sensor for the speedometer. Um, but essentially everything's back in here. It's all in place. Oh, I need to do the bracket for this. Um, but that'll have to be another day because this whole thing took me a lot longer than I anticipated. This is another thing I don't like is that there's a tiny bit of a gap here. Um, I know a lot of bikes are like that. Especially when you're trying to mix and match things. But like, I mean, because of the thickness of this seat here, the profile, um, and the angle of this tank from the Triumph. It's just, uh, it's not a perfect match, so that kind of bothers me a little bit, as where if I use the other one, I could totally build around it. It's only, it's a, it's a pretty thin profile, so I think it'll line up actually with the bottom of this here. Uh, so it'll look pretty good. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much essentially almost done and rideable. So I think on the next video, I'll try to start it. Um, and then I can maybe try to go for a ride like it's this is not really on there all that well it's just loosely bolted on um, but I need to make a complete bracket so I can actually get this thing sitting straight I'm thinking I'm gonna cut this ring out since I don't need it anymore um, and then I'll be able to put this nice and tight like maybe in this groove here but the only thing that's holding it into place right now is in here, there's a thread for the bolt, as you can see. So I don't want to cut that off, but I'm afraid if I just cut it all off, um, not really sure I'm going to make a bracket. Like, here I can use those screws on the bottom there, like where the handlebars screw in to kind of make a bracket. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do yet. That'll be for another day though, because that's a bigger project. Um, but just turning it on, kind of all works. So. Uh, uh, I don't remember if I told Jeff to hook up the neutral light. Um, I'm gonna assume it's not considering I don't see it lit up. Um, and then obviously the fuel gauge is always gonna blink zero because there was nothing for me to hook it up to this tank. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this bike had an analog fuel gauge, but I'm not 100% sure. So that'll just always blink, so I don't care. Um, let's see. So that's that. 
I hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope you like what you see in the content I'm creating. Uh, so please help out and subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget the little notification bo uh, bell thing. And if you want to grab one of these holster cell phone things that I'm wearing, there's a promo code in the description. And I've created a promo code just for you guys, all my followers, because I can do that. And uh, I hope um, I get your support one way or another. Uh, so thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.